which includes 36 Theros Beyond Death booster packs. With the amount of time it'll take, I don't know if I'll be able to read through every card, but we'll see how long it takes and go from there. also covered in a shrink wrap. I wonder, I think everything's going to be upside down because I have the camera uh, upside down, so I'm probably going to have to flip this over, so um, I guess I'll do everything from my perspective first, and then when I, I guess when I edit the video I can just flip everything, not 90, but 180 degrees, so. Yeah, that's all I'll do. Sorry, everybody, you're, you're, uh, good to hear my thought process. <laughs> all right, let's open this up. Hexproof until end of turn, meaning it can't be dark. 
bit more focused, so we'll move forward like this and we'll see how it goes. So the next card is Garametra's Blessing. It costs one white mana to cast. It is an instant target creature. gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. If it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn, meaning it cannot be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Damage and effects that say destroy, don't destroy. is Captivating Unicorn, which costs 5 mana, 4 and a white to cast. It's a unicorn creature, and it has a constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. It has 4 power and 4 toughness. Next is Inspire Awe, which costs 4 mana, 3 and a green to cast. It's an instant. Um, it prevents all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, except combat damage that would be dealt by en uh, enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. Scry 2. Um, because we have so many packs here, uh, we're probably not going to go through uh, all the information on all these cards, but... Final Death, which is an instant that exiles a target creature. Next is Altar of the Pantheon, which is an artifact. Um, you know, some of these I might read, um, like this one. Your devotion to each color and each combination of colors is increased by one. So I guess that would be good for like those mono black decks that people are playing. That include that merchant of whatever. Next is uh, Whirlwind Denial. It's an instant. Uh, for each spell and ability your opponent controls, counter it unless your uh, unless its controller pays four mana. Costs three mana to cast two and a blue. Uh, this is an interesting card. Lagana Band Storyteller. Or Lagana Band Storyteller. Uh, it's a centaur advisor with three power, four toughness. Costs four mana, three and a white to cast. Uh, when Lagana Band Storyteller enters the battlefield, you may put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. If you do, you gain life equal to its converted mana cost. It's an interesting card. Clothis is... I have no idea. This is design. Uh, it's a sorcery. Creatures you control gain uh, uh, plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is your devotion to green. I'm finding that a lot of these uh, devotion cards, which is, uh, you know, the amount of a certain color in your mana pool. Uh, I'm finding that a lot... Ooh, we just got a mythic. Uh, I'm finding that a lot of those cards... Um, encourage you to play mono colored decks which I don't hate I'm actually a fan of you know like mono mono green and mono black when I'm just playing one color I like it but uh, I don't know it's an interesting move anyway so our next card is a mythic it is and it has some pretty interesting art uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient it costs four mana I'm sorry it costs seven 
this trample. Uh, if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much mana instead. So this is actually going to be very, very good for, like, uh, an elemental stack and, uh, you know, it and leave can druid. You know, if you could probably do, like, a, a, a mono green elemental stack and include this guy, and that would be a great card to have. Um, he has five power and five toughness. So I'm, I'm actually going to, uh, I'll just leave it here for now, but I think I might actually set this one aside, uh, because I am definitely going to be using this card.
Next we have Archon of the Falling Stars. Uh, it costs six mana, four, and two white to cast. It's an Archon creature. It has flying. When Archon of the F uh, Falling Stars dies, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It has four power and four toughness. Next is Enemy of the Enlightenment, which looks pretty interesting. It's an enchantment creature. Demon, it has flying. Uh, Enemy of Enlightenment gets minus one, minus one for each card in your opponent's hand. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. It's five power and five toughness. This is a, that seems very weird, but I don't hate it. Just trying to get it to focus, but it simply will not. Next we have Stinging Lionfish. It's an enchantment creature. Fish costs two mana, one and a blue to cast. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. It has two power and one toughness. Next we have Storm Herald. Um, costs three mana, two and a red to cast. It's a human shaman creature with haste, and when he enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to creatures you control. Wow, that's really good. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them uh, instead of putting them anywhere else. It's three power and two toughness. I like that card a lot. And we have a mountain land card. Just a general. I don't even know if we got a token. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna sort these really quickly. And then we will move on. And I'm gonna try to figure out a way that I can get the camera to focus on these cards better so that you can see them. Because right now it looks like it's going to focus a lot. That's what I might do. Is put these two, I think. If we put a couple packs closer. an enchantment aura with flash enchanted creature gets plus one plus two costs two mana one and a white to cast next we have night 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 i can't say that something of the hidden coves uh, it's an enchantment creature nymph as long as it's not your turn spells you cast cost one less spells you cast cost one less to cast uh, it has Two power and three toughness. Cost three mana, two and a blue to cast. Alrighty. Next is Underworld Rage Hound. Costs two mana, one and a red to cast. It's an elemental hound creature. 
round attacks each combat if able. It has an escape cost where you can exile three other cards from your graveyard and bring it back. Um, or you may cast it from the graveyard for its escape cost. It costs four mana, three and a red to cast. Underworld Rage Hound escapes with a plus one, plus one counter on it. It is three power and one toughness. I've already constructed 
creature. When an uh, aspect of Manticore enters the battlefield, enchanted creature gains first strike until end of turn, uh, and your enchanted creature gets plus two, plus zero. Next is Sun Main Pegasus, which costs four mana, three and a white to cast. It's a creature Pegasus with flying. Uh, it has two power and three toughness, and it has an ability which costs two mana, one and a white to cast, where Sun Main Pegasus gains vigilance and lifelink until end of turn. Next we have Nyxborn Sea Guard, which costs four. It's an enchantment creature, Merf Merfolk Soldier, with two power and five toughness. Next we have Thrill of Possibility, which costs two mana, one and a red to cast. It's an instant. As an additional cost to cast this spell, discard a card and draw two cards. Next we have Lamphead of Death's Vigil, which costs two mana, one and a black to cast. It's an enchantment creature, Nymph. If you pay one mana, you can sacrifice a creature, and each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. It has one uh, power and three toughness. Next we have Nexus Wardens, which are Sarter Archers, or Sarter Archer creatures. They cost three mana, two, and a green to cast as reach, and it is a constellation when, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life. They have one power and four toughness. Be a nice way to take out some pesky healer's hawks. Next is Revoke Existence, which costs two mana, one and a white to cast. It's a sorcery that exiles target enchantment or artifact. Next we have another Inspire Awe. Then we have a Flummoxed Cyclops, which costs four mana, three, and one red to cast. It's a creature Cyclops with reach. Whenever two or more creatures your opponents control attack, Flummox Cy Cyclops can't block this uh, can't block this combat. He has four power and four toughness. Ooh. Next is that gray merchant. I've been seeing everywhere. <coughs> uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel costs five mana, three and two black to cast. When Grey Merchant of Asphodel enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life, where X is your devotion to black. You gain life equal to the life lost this way. Um, two power and four toughness. So he's been a win condition in a bunch of decks that I've seen. So I'm actually I'm, I'm going to set him aside. Next we have Shoal Kraken. Which costs five mana, four and a blue to cast. It's a kraken creature with three power and five toughness. It's a constellation where where every enter whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Next we have Mirror Shield, which costs two mana. It's an artifact equipment. Uh, equipped creature gets plus zero, plus two, and has X proof. And whenever a creature with death touch blocks or becomes blocked by this creature, destroy that creature. This is a good way to sh shut down any death touch decks. Next, we have Satessin Champion, which costs three mana, two, and a green to cast. It's a human warrior creature with a constellation where wherever, uh, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Satessin Champion and draw a card. One power and three toughness. Ooh, next, this is a this looks like a really nice card. Uh, it's a rare card. Enchantment creature, Snake Lamia. Gravebreaker Lamia. 
costs five mana, four, and a black to cast. It has lifelink. When Gravebreaker Lemia enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. It is four power and four toughness. And I don't know if you'll be able to see, but this one's kind of got, yeah, look at that. So I'm going to set this one off to the side because it's holographic and shiny, and I likes it. Also, I kind of like the, uh, the card itself, kind of what it does. Uh, and then the last two cards are a human soldier token, whoop-de-doo, and a forest, which I am happy to, happy to grab. So we'll set Lamia aside. I'm going to sort through all these cards. Vexing Gull. Vexing Gull. Costs three mana, two and a blue to cast. It is flash and flying. Uh, it's a bird creature with two power and two toughness. I actually kind of like that. Um, the fact that it is flash and flying, I don't know. It'd be a good way to take out any, like, one ones, you know? Aspect of Lamprey. This is a very weird, very creepy art. Uh, it has f it costs four mana to cast three and a black. It's an enchantment aura. Uh, enchant uh, you enchant a creature that you control. When aspect of lamp enters the battlefield, target opponent discards two card. Enchanted creature has life link. Look at that mouth. Yuck. Next is Sedescent Training. Uh, it's an enchantment aura. Costs two mana, one and a green to cast. And you enchant a creature you control. Uh, when Sedescent Training enters the battlefield, draw a card. And the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has trample. Next is Rumbling Sentry, which costs five mana, three, and two white to cast. It's a creature giant. When Rumbling Sentry enters the battlefield, scry one. It's three power and six toughness. Next is Voracious Typhoon, or Typhon. Voracious Typhon, which costs... Four mana, two, and two green to cast. It's a snake beast creature. It has an escape cost where you can cast it from the uh, from your graveyard. Four, seven, five, and two green to cast. And you also have to exile four other cards from your graveyard in order to cast it from the graveyard. Voracious Typhon escapes with three plus one plus one counters on it. And it has four power and four toughness. Next is Skyphos War Leader which costs five mana, four, and a red to cast. It's a Minotaur warrior creature. You can pay one red mana to sacrifice another creature or an enchantment, and Warlord, uh, Skyphos Warlord gets plus one, plus zero, and gains menace until the end of turn. Where menace is, it can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. It has five power, uh, four power and five toughness. Next is Meyer's Grasp, uh, which is a... Enchantment Aura costs one, uh, two mana, one, and a black to cast. You enchant a creature, and that enchanted creature gets minus three, minus three. Next is Towering Wave Mystic, which costs two mana, one, and a blue to cast. It's a merfolk wizard creature. When Towering Wave Mystic deals damage, target player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. He has two power and one toughness. Next we have Daybreak Chimera, which is five mana to cast, three and two white. He's a Chimera creature. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to white. Uh, you know, devotion to white being the number of white mana in each of the mana costs of permanence you control. It is flying. It is three power and three toughness. I hate that. Cards get all slidey on you. 
once you put too many in a in a stack. <laughs> Next is Mire Triton, which costs two mana, one and a black to cast. It has Death Touch. When Mire Triton enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard and you gain two life. It is two power and one toughness. I really like this card. I've seen it played in a couple decks. Specifically self mill, like reanimator decks, so I'm gonna set this one off to the side as I might be using it in future uh, decks. Next is Sweet Oblivion, which costs two mana, one and a blue to cast. It's a sorcery. Target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. It has an escape cost of four mana, three and a blue, uh, and exiling four other cards from your graveyard uh, in order to play its escape cost, where essentially you can play it from your graveyard. Next is Nessian Horn Beetle, which costs two mana, one and a green to cast. It's an insect creature. At the beginning of uh, combat on your turn, if you control another creature with power of four or greater, put a plus one plus one counter on Nessie and Horn Beetle. Hey, we got a legendary creature. Kenoros, Hound of Eth Etherios. Hope I'm saying that right. Probably aren't. Uh, it costs three mana, one, a white, and a black to cast. It's a legendary hound creature with vigilance, menace, and lifelink. Creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from the graveyards. It's three power and three toughness. That's actually a really good card, especially for this set, because there's so much stuff with escape costs. And the art is really cool. It looks like, what's that three-headed dog? Cerberus. Sit, sit, puppy. <laughs> sit, boo, <laughs> sit, uh, sit, boo, boo, sit. Good dog. Um, and then we have a forest mana. So that's dope. I'm gonna set that card aside, and then also the Meyer Triton aside. Let's sort through these cards here. Master, or I should say another Nylias Hunt Master. 
Now we have Pious Wayfarer, which costs one white uh, mana to cast. He's a human scout creature. He has a constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. He has one power and two toughness. We have Whirlwind Denial, uh, which we've seen before. We have Inevitable End, which costs two and a black to cast. It's an enchantment aura. Enchanted creature has at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature. Ooh, we have, uh, okay, I like this card. Uh, the Binding of the Titans. It costs two mana, one and a green to cast. It's a saga. So uh, there's three parts that occur over three turns. Um, as this saga enters, and after you draw, uh, and after your draw step, add a lore counter. Sacrifice after three. So the first step is each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. The next step is exile up to two target cards from your graveyards. For each creature card exiled this way, you gain one life. And then the last step is return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. It's an enchantment saga. Oh, we got another one. So the next saga that we have is called the first Iron and Iron Games. Uh, you sacrifice it after four steps or after four turns. It has three. Uh, it costs three to cast, two, and a green to cast. Step one, or turn one, um, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Part two, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Step three, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two cards, and then step four, create a gold token. I don't know what a gold token is, but I'm sure I'll find out. Uh, next is Witness of Tomorrows, which costs 5 mana, 4 and a blue to cast. It's an enchantment creature, Sphinx with Flying, and it has an ability where you can pay 3 mana and a blue and scry 1. It's 3 power and 4 toughness. He's also another shiny card. I'll probably put him aside. And then we have a Swamp. know the drill now. I'm just going to sort through these cards. Put them in the respective piles that you cannot see off screen, just so that it's easier for me at a later date to kind of sort through all this stuff. Boy, oh boy, this is going to be a long video. We have another night yeah, yeah, if they hidden cove some whatever. <laughs> Arena Trickster. Uh, 
costs four mana to cast three and a red. It's a human shaman. Whenever you cast your first spell. Ah, we've seen this one. Next is Pious Wayfarer, which we have seen. Next is Drag to the Underworld. Um, four mana, two and a black to cast. Uh, two and two blacks to cast. It's an instant. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to black, and you destroy a target creature. Next we have Ferris Band Brawler. Costs six mana, four and two green to cast. It's a cent uh, centaur warrior creature. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. It's four power and four toughness. Next is Nessian Wanderer. Costs two mana, one and a green to cast. Does a constellation where whenever an enchantment uh, enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any random order. Cost one and uh, I'm sorry, has one and three, uh, one power, three toughness. Next is Nightmare Shepherd. Uh, this is a card I'll probably be setting aside. Um, costs four mana, two and two blacks to cast. It's an enchantment creature demon with flying. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a 1-1, one, one, and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. He has four power and four toughness. So, yeah, I'm probably going to set him aside. I've seen him in a couple decks I want to try playing. Lastly, we have a swamp and a tentacle. Two and a 
black. Um, and the steps one and two, I think, occur on the same thing. Uh, on the same turn, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. And then the next step is, or the third step, you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. Next we have Careless Celebrant. Uh, this one's shiny. Interesting. Costs two mana, one and a red to cast. When Careless Celebrant dies, it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. It has two power and one toughness. And then we have an Elemental, which has Trample and Haste. In a mountain. is Wolf Willow Haven. Costs two mana to cast one and a green. It's an enchantment aura. You enchant a land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional forest mana. And then for five mana, uh, four and a green to cast, sacrifice will, uh, Wolf Hollow Haven create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. Activate this ability only during your turn. That could actually be very useful for my wolf deck. Next is Thundering Enchantment, uh, Thundering Chariot. It costs four mana to cast. It's an artifact vehicle. It is first strike, trample, and haste. It's crew crew one. I've never seen this before. Tap any number of creatures you control with a total power of one or more. This vehicle becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. <laughs> it's three power and three toughness. Well, here I'll show it to you. Wow. Ah. Enigmatic Incarnation costs 4 mana, 2 
cast. It's an enchantment at the beginning of your end step. You may sacrifice another uh, enchantment if you do search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus the sacrificed enchantment's um, converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. I'm going to put that one off to the side. Next is Flicker of Fate. Costs 2 mana, 1 and a white to cast. It's an instant exile target creature or enchantment, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. And our last two cards are a planes and a human soldier token. Six power and seven toughness. That looks like that would be really good for a uh, devotion to green deck. We have Soul Reaper of Mogus next. I think we've seen this one before. Next we have Chain to Memory. It costs one blue to cast. It's an instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero until end of turn. Let's cry two. Scout. When it enters the battlefield, untap target creature. Three power, three toughness. Costs three, uh, three mana, two and a green to cast. I'm gonna set this one off to the side because I've seen a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool deck with this and corridor monitor and um, corridor monitor and uh, there's another card included in that deck that um, is pretty good. But anyway, it's not focusing for whatever reason. Boy, that card just wants to slide away. Next is Sarder's Cunning. We have Hero of the Pride. Then we have Traveler's Amulet. Then we have Farika's Spawn. Celebrant Underworld Dreams And then our rare card is Edelon of Obstruction Costs 2 mana 1 and a white to cast It's an enchantment creature spirit With first strike Loyalty abilities of planewalkers Your opponent's control cost 1 more to activate And It has 2 power and 1 toughness streak of not getting blue swamps or I'm sorry, not getting blue lands continues. We got a swamp.
Transcendent Envoy. Rage Scarred Berserker. Rage Scarred Berserker. Gift of Strength. It's a very weird picture to have for why and what that is associated with strength, I don't know. Wings of Hubris. Flicker of Fate. Thirst for meaning. Funeral rites. Edelon of philosophy. A slaughter priest of Mogus. Costs two mana, a black and a red to cast. It's a minotaur shaman. Whenever a creature, uh, whenever you sacrifice a permanent slaughter priest of Mogus, gets plus two, plus uh, zero until end of turn. You can uh, tap two mana, sacrifice another creature or an enchantment, and it gains first strike until end of turn. It has two power and two toughness. Can set him aside. We have dragged to the underworld. A dream shaper shaman. Six mana, five and a red to cast. Enchantment creature, minotaur shaman. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay three mana, two and a red, and sacrifice an non-land permanent. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest of the uh, on the bottom of your library in any random order. Costs five. Uh, I'm sorry. It's five power and four toughness. Now we have Heliod's intervention, which costs X and two white to cast. It's an instant where you choose one, destroy X artif uh, target artifacts and or enchantments, or target player gains twice X life. And we got our first blue or island mana. <laughs> Thank God. And then we got a human soldier creature to open. <laughs> Noise. Sentinel's Eyes, 
a fixing goal. Underworld Charger. Plummet. Grim Physician. Omen of the Sea. of tomorrow's uh, Devourer of Memory. This is uh, blue and black. It's a nightmare creature. Whenever one or more cards are put into your graveyard from your library, Devourer of Memory gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked this turn. And then for an ability which costs three mana, one, a blue, and a black, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. It has two power and one toughness. your opponent. 
damage control, loose hex proof and indestructible until end of turn. And then you equip it by tapping two mana. Be a good way to shut down a deck that has hex proof. Anything that's a, you know, a problem that you can shut down. And then we have a forest and a human soldier creature token. Human soldier creature. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Ichthyomorphosis. 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 Enchanted creature loses all its abilities and is a blue fish with base power and toughness of zero one. <laughs> poor guy. Look at that poor fish. Next is Blight Breath Catobble Bass. What? This set has some stuff I just cannot. <laughs> I, I just can't. Next is Relentless Pursuit. Another Altar of the Pantheon. Another Nihilus Huntmaster. And then next we have a Fruit of Tazaris. One black mana to cast. Target player loses two. Oh no, we've seen this. Dawn Evangel. Sea Gods Scorn. Favorite of Iroas. And then we have a legendary enchantment creature, Spider. A Rasta of the Endless Web. It costs four mana, two and two green to cast. It has reach. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a one, two green spider creature token with reach. Three power and five toughness. Very creepy art. Favor. Revoke a 
existence. Inspire awe. Nix Herald. Slaughter Priest of Mogus. Hateful Edelon. And then we have Atris Oracle of Half Truths. It costs two, a blue and a black to cast. It's a legendary creature, human advisor with menace. When Atreus, Oracle of Hath Truth, enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into face uh, into a face down pile and face up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Three power and two toughness. I'm going to put him into a separate pile because I like this card. And then we have a mountain and guess what? A human soldier creature token. Enraptured, which costs three mana, two and a blue to cast. It's a legendary creature, human. When he enters, he enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, Aliris doesn't untap during your untap step if you control a reflection. When Aliris enters the battlefield, create a three, two blue reflection creature token. Two power and three toughness. Dream Shaper Shaman. I'm actually going to set him off to the side. Minions return. Nessian Boar, a forest, and a sarder. Each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. She has 
is X and uh, X power, you know, based on your devotion to green and three toughness. We have agonizing remorse. Warden of the Chained, which costs three mana, one, a red and a green to cast, a Minotaur warrior creature with trample, four power, four toughness. Warden of the Chained can't attack unless you control another creature with power four or greater. This next card is, uh, I've seen it a lot. Dryad of the Elysian Grove, two power, uh, two, two mana and a green to cast, so three mana total. Enchantment creature nymph, you may play an additional land card on each of your turns. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Two power, four toughness. Very good card. Then we have a forest and a wolf.
Scarred Berserker, Grim Physician, Thirst for Meaning, Cetessian Skirmisher, Irona's Blessing, Funeral Rites, Dreadful Apathy, Impending Doom, Blood Aspirant, Heliot's Punishment, Nedir Kraken, and a Nyx Bloom Nyx Born Colossus.
twice it unless it escapes. Whenever a hero enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Its escape cost is two forest and two uh, island mana, and exile five cards from your graveyard. You may cast this uh, card from your graveyard for its escape cost. Six power and six toughness. It's a very cool, very cool card. And then a forest and a human soldier creature token. Human soldier creature. Crafter of Wonders. 
creatures costs three mana, one, a blue, and a red to cast. Legendary Merfolk Artificer Creature. You can tap it and add two colorless mana. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities from artifacts. Equipped creatures you control have flying and haste. Two power and four toughness, and it's a shiny card. Very pretty. And we got an island and a sorter. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and 
has lifelink, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Hateful, Edelon, Heliod, uh, Suncrowned, costs three mana, two and a white to cast. It's a legendary enchantment creature, god, with indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than five, Heliod isn't a creature. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And then you have an ability, which is two mana, one and a white to cast. Another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. Five power and five toughness. So one, not Thassa, but very close. And then an island and a Pegasus. And that will do it. So that is all of the cards that I got. In my 36 Theros packs, I know uh, after a while we just kind of rushed through all this, but it would have taken forever if I was reading every single one of these cards. So thank you for hanging out and listening to me open these packs, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make uh, a deck or two out of what we have here that could be, uh, you know, considered a pr pretty good. Um, overall, I think this looks like an exciting set. I mean, there are a lot of cool cards. Um, obviously, you know, it's um, the higher end, you know, the rarer cards. Things like Thassa, things like um, Heliod, you know, the gods and demigods of the set look very cool. And the card interactions that you can have uh, seem pretty cool. So I'm excited. I'm excited to kind of figure out where to go and what, what to... Uh, to do next with these uh, with these.